first thing is that we're going to look at our minutes from last meeting, the March 12th meeting. And if anyone has any comments. I didn't see anything. Nor did I. How about anybody else? Okay by me. Okay. Does someone want to make a motion to accept them as written? I'll move to accept the minutes from last month's meeting as written. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, great, John. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any nays? Nope. So all in favor, so they're accepted. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the ceiling height variance for 15 Blue Hills uh, Road. And we have all these, these information from Ed Smith with the pictures. Ed, do you want to weigh in on this? Um, I didn't have any reservations about recommending that they be allowed to have a variance for the ceiling height. It's um, reasonably modern construction. It appears dry. Um, part of the basement had already been finished out. And uh, they have already gone to steps to remove or have testing done. I don't know that they had any asbestos, but they did testing and then they had a professional removal of some of the old materials you can see in some of the pictures where tiles were removed from the floor. Um, the heights I put on the different pictures, which yes. I think you probably see those. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think they're reasonable. There weren't pipes hanging down that will make a, a great effect on the usability of the space. Um, so, so it's not like you know, you have to watch out for something you're going to brain yourself with as you go across the room. Um, so, you know, at your discretion, I think that it's a, a reasonable request. Anyone have any questions for Ed? What is the usual minimum height for ceilings? Seven feet. Okay. And if you were to build a house, you know, new today, you would probably have that in mind. Um, you know, we have requests for rental rooms um, in houses going back to the 1800s and earlier at times. And, you know, less than seven foot ceilings, especially on upper floors, is not uncommon. So is this for a rental or is this for just personal use in their house? No, this is for personal use. This is a single family house on Blue Hills. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about half an inch? Excuse half me? inch. Are we talking about half an inch difference from seven feet? Um, for well, two of the rooms, yeah. For right, but these are unfinished heights, so yeah. they're be padded down. You know, furring and plastic sheetrock um, could be another inch to inch and a half, maybe two inches in places. So for the shortest ceiling, I think was six nine and a half. It could be as low as six seven and a half. I have so a cousin the other one his, would be. <laughs> it seems reasonable to me. I have a cousin who at his peak was six eleven, but he's he's eighty one now, and uh, <laughs> shrunk a good bit. But he he would struggle with that. But that's uh that's out there on the extremes. This family appeared to fit comfortably within the ceiling height. Most people <laughs> would. As would I. <laughs> yeah. <that's what> <laughs> Okay, any other comments? Seems reasonable. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll move that we approve the uh, ceiling height variance for 15 Blue Hills Road. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, so we have five in favor. That passes. Next, the well application, Lot C, Leverett Road. 
uh, especially our engineers. Comments on that? Um, I, I just have, Ed, can you um, give me something that I can look it up on Google Maps? Lot C doesn't do much for me on Leverett Road, but is there some, <laughs> if I go to Leverett Road, can you give me something to look for? Yeah, three, you actually can search by the parcel numbers if you want, 3A-21. Um, on, on Google I, Maps, I can? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I was thinking of the town maps. Right, goes, I'm on just yeah, Google uh, Maps. It's 200 Leverett Road. It's, the, that is very, it's at 200 level, Leverett Road, although I'm not sure which side. But that's, Thank you. I didn't see that. Let's, it's, it's, it's on the west side. Yeah. This is part of the, um, the Kittredge estate, if you will. It's been broken up into lots. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, just one second. So I have it in GIS if you want to see it. Yeah, I was surprised that we didn't get a, a lot, a plot with our with Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can be sure to do that next time. Oh, thank you. I was muted. I was asking you a question. Is it on the east side? Yeah, on the west side. West side. Yeah, so on the, if you're heading away from Cushman on the left side of Leverett Road. Okay. 200. Okay. So it, it reaches all the way down to the train tracks. Okay, Bridge oh, okay. Street, go out Leverett and. Okay, okay, and there's the train over there. Got it. Got it, okay. The parcel anyway. And this one is a new, I'm looking at the map, the septic system map, but um, where is the well on the map? I was trying to locate the well on the, either the septic system or the site plan, and I wasn't succeeding. Okay. I wasn't succeeding. Let's see. Let me get back to that. Um, is it in the front of the? I think it, it, it shows actually on the septic plan. It's, oh, there it is. I got it. I found it. I found it. Yeah, there's a hundred. I just didn't blow up enough. Proposed well location. Got it. Yep. Got it. So the... The road then is to the to the right on this plan, right? Or to Leverett Road. Bottom. I gotta I gotta find a north south arrow on this map. <laughs> Are you looking at the septic plan? I am. Okay, so the north south arrow is at the bottom right corner. Bottom. Right. And uh, so Leverett Road. Oh, is okay, okay. Yeah. It's 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 not oriented north south. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So and you the, see the, the hundred foot arc, and then the septic yeah, system not quite hundred feet beyond that. So that a hundred feet is on. It, it, so the edge of Levitt Road is actually not shown on the site plan, or this. no, it's not. It's a little farther. Got um, it. Got it. Than Got the border it. there. Okay. And the plot plan. If I go that, does it also show? Yeah, it's got Levitt Road. I got it. I got it. Okay. So that doesn't show the well, but the well is close to there. So those are all downhill contours for this proposed uh, driveway. Yes. Yeah. Downhill, downhill to the house site. Then there's wetlands and somewhere the railroad shows. Oh, I got it. Okay. All the way down to the railroad. Got it. Strange lot, huh? Triangle piece. It of is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I can go to 
Google Maps and see if I can picture this a little bit better. Got it. Where is it? Where is it that triangle hitting the railroad relative to the building that's next to the railroad down there? There's a building and vehicles. Is it south of that or north? Of oh, that? it's um, south of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a maintenance building that um, was used by Mr. Kittredge, just as the people that maintained the property. Yeah. It's still back there. There's a a greenhouse, a large greenhouse that I believe just sold with another parcel. And I think that's going to get built on later. Uh, and there's some interest in uh, lots that are south of this one along Leverett Road. Uh huh. Okay. So this is a dividing of a larger parcel, this thing. It is, yeah. Yeah. I didn't look at the town map. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of a rolling piece of probably former pasture land. Yeah. But this piece is just south of those buildings that are near the railroad? Yes, yeah, that the triangle point is. The triangle point is, yeah, okay. Line of trees, got it, got it. all right. Um, so I should know this, but obviously I'm guessing I, the, the town, our town water main doesn't go up Levitt Road there? It does not. Yeah, no, we stop on East Levitt there. Yeah, it's it's all, um it's all septic i'm not sure how far the water may go out there yeah are these contours um oh, they're relative they're not real contours yeah okay um the elevation starts to challenge the our, our water system there so okay we gets too high to be served by our water system sure fairly quickly um, so let's see. Well, so it looks. Uh, you you saw your letter. Everything looked fine to you and land use. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. What's the meaning of the 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 line of water? Uh, it says the the uh, highest water mark or something like that. Is there actually standing water there part of the year? Where is that comment? Um, uh, that that's on the that is on the site map. Site right. plan. Yeah, to the right of the driveway into the proposed house. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's a dotted line going around, and it says uh, the, where the water comes to. But I think that relates to a wetland delineation. Yeah. See, it, yeah, it's two hundred feet from that to the right of the driveway to the high water, to the um, wetland, to mean high water, 200 feet. So the, um, the Water Protection Act, or Tim, I don't remember the right name. Or Tony, um, anyway, you, the riparian zone, is, you, you can't do stuff within 200 feet of certain water sure. courses and wetlands, so. It just yeah. seems like there's no water source there. Where does that water come from? There's no stream apparently, or no uh, standing water that I could see. On Google Earth or here, it, is it just spring runoff or spring it, ver, an vernal pool or something like that? Well, you see the the little line, dotted line in March. Yep. That's that's wetland, the edge of wetland designation by somebody. Okay. On the, by uh, Ward Smith. Yep. And so it's just two hundred feet from there. Yep. I don't know what it is. Uh, drainage easement, so there must be a low spot there. Let's see. If yeah. we can Google Earth, what it looks like. Uh, yeah, it certainly doesn't <laughs> doesn't jump out jump out at you. Anyway, it's two hundred feet. It's 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 yep. conforming, yep. so no big deal. I'm just curious as to what that was, but wow, that was yeah. You can sort of make out, if you zoom in on Google Earth, you can make out the path of the low spot drainage, basically low spot going along the edge of the property there. Yeah. You can see how that exists. Anyway. I, I don't see any issues with it. Wonder what the over... Overburden is there. Ed, do you know how much depth to bedrock is in that area? No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. 
Yeah, I don't either. No, I, I know that, you know, the PERC tests, uh, when we did the deep holes for the soil evaluation, we, I believe, reached the full 10 feet down or, uh -huh. you know, nearly yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I don't have any more questions myself. It's fine, yeah. Okay, anybody else have any questions? It's hard for me to look on my looking on my iPhone at it. Yeah. <laughs> keep moving it. It's not that easy. No. You can't bring it up on your screen. But, okay. but I have, I've got 30 files open at the moment on my computer, so it's just finding <laughs> so, it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do all that. Um, <laughs> okay, so you think it's okay, John? I don't know. I think so. Tim, do you have any comments? It's okay. Timothy, <laughs> you think it's okay? Uh, it's okay. I just wanted to uh, check on one question. That is uh, Eastman Brook. Uh, that's what you you know the high water table is talking. They are talking about. Okay. Oh yeah. Is that right? Uh, is it? Uh, I see on the GIS map. Uh, Eastman Brook is like marking that high water table. Eastman Brook on which kind of map? Uh, I'm looking at Oliver. It's a GIS map. Oh, okay. I'm not. So is, at... is that the brook that's mainly on the right-hand side of the road, the east side of the road? Uh, yes. And um, then the... that's so where that's... the wetland edges there, and oh. the north side of the road. <laughs> you mean oh, east side of um, Lever north side, side of the parcel, right? Boy, if it's a brook, it's not. I mean, when you look on Google Maps, it's sure hard to pick out a brook. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. If you look on the, you know the thing that's south of it. What? I see a little thing south of that. Okay. The town's mapping is showing a, a clearly a brook on the east side of Leverett Road, which then sort of fades into wetland. Yeah. And, you know, these are from earlier. Yeah on the north side of the parcel that we're considering right yeah you can you can make it out in the google in the google earth or google maps mm -hmm. but so that's apparently what ward smith was flagging and measuring from yeah yeah now you, yeah you can see from the vegetation where the wetland outline is so that 200 feet is still enough even if it's a little Brook or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. is this all? Is this all south of what used to be Earth Earth Care Earth? You know Fletcher, oh uh, Gordon Fletcher House property. Is this south of that property? I'm not familiar with that. Okay, uh, I think it is. Just look up. That's just... the that's the stuff. Three A eleven, three A fifty. I believe that's. So that used to be, um, uh, Gordon had a, a landscaping business and he developed the property into some pretty gardens and that. I believe yeah. that's that piece. Yeah, three so of this is, is right north of that and there's a pond yeah. beyond it towards yeah. the yeah. road tracks. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's where the greenhouse is right next to that too. Yeah, so that used to be all uh, Gordon Fletcher Howe and Melody Fletcher Howe's property. Okay, got it. Now I can yeah. completely visualize it. So it seems like the easement distances are okay, right? Mm -hmm. oh. So we have the Eastman Brook Conservation Area. So I would. I'd... Timothy, did that answer your question? Yeah, I, I think, you know, um, it's far from the Eastman Brook uh, within those limits of 200 and it should be fine, I think. Okay. So I move we um, accept the well permit application for uh, Lot C and Levert Road. I Approve second. whatever we say. A second? I could second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Right. Any opposing? Any abstaining? Okay, so unanimously 
voted. Okay, thank you. Then well application on 846 East Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. That map up. Mm -hmm. uh, that one's easier to find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found anyway. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Where am I? But it's an even funnier shaped lot around it. Yeah, that is. Yeah, the cutout is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> That is a funny cutout around it. Big, it's a big field. So this one, I the only question I have here, I'm curious about, is why they are drilling a well and not using town water. I believe what I was told is expense. Expense, okay. Yeah. The, the, to run the service line in from East Pleasant Street. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, they are cooking up to town sewer, though. I'm not being asked to, to review a septic plan. Yeah, they don't have a choice on that one. <laughs> the, the, Why know, is Hampshire, that? Right? Hampshire, Hampshire House got a waiver in for a special pilot, or the, not the Hampshire, but uh, the living building stuff. But yeah, the rule, if, if you have access to uh, a town sewer, you, have, you must connect. I, Looks like they might be running a greenhouse or something there in the future. So maybe they think they need yeah. water. Yeah. Right. It's agricultural land. So maybe. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I actually will have to check on that. I, I wasn't aware that you had to connect to town sewer if it was available. I believe for any new construction. Okay. In other words, if a sewer goes by, I live in a, a street that, that had septic and sewers go by, you don't have to connect. Right if you have an existing Title V compliant septic system. But if you go to sell your property and it, the Title V system is non-compliant, I believe then you have to connect. I don't know that you can fix a failed Title V if there's a sewer available. That's I a believe. nuance I can't remember. Okay, I'll, I, I'll check into that because yeah. I have been operating differently than that. Well, that's my understanding of it. Okay. Because, and the, and the reason I'm so, it's in my head is because of the living building challenge the whole thing at Hampshire College is um, yeah. you can't have a Title V system if you can hook up to a sewer for a new construction. Right, and they were allowed to, to bring the sewer line right there, but not connect to it. Mm, they're all, it's, a, it's on a campus, so there's already a sewer around. I mean, the, the property abuts a, a, an available sewer to connect to, so okay. that means they could have, uh, could have attached to it. Right, and can at any time. Yeah. I assume this one, you know, I don't know the terrain. Looks we'll probably be a pumped connection, but it's a, it's a long way from the road. It is. So, and and not uphill. If it's downhill, if anything, I think. I'm pretty sure it's down. Yeah, it's it's pretty flat there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not not uphill, which is what. They no, do. no, not uphill. <laughs> um, there's actually a pump station not far in from on Grantwood. Oh, sewer pump station. But anyway. Okay. And no uh, no responses from the butters or anything, no problem with that. Yeah. None that I know of. Good. Yeah, we got all those copy of all the letters that got sent out. Yeah, the burden of certified letters for this property was considerable. I think they oh, had like yeah. <laughs> 63 letters went out. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it was, they still wanted to do this instead of up to town waters, or yeah, to town water. Hmm. Okay. So, anybody have any further questions? I, my only question was about the town water part. Okay. And I, I, we've actually on the water supply protection committee been asked to look at some new regulations, but uh, I don't think there's any requirement to connect to town water. I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, I, then, I'm not aware of any. Yeah, it's never come up. Timothy, do you have any yeah. questions? So that uh, it looks like there is an approximate location of the well. Uh, how far is it from the proposed house they're going to build? Say something like a thirty feet or something like that. 
Let's see. Is there any restriction from the existing oh, buildings? No, you can, I, I think you can be as close as five or 10 feet off of um, a structure. You need to have clearance above, okay. you know, for access. Um, but I, they're well away from the house. I mean, yeah. they're sufficiently far away from the house. Um, um, yeah, I'm looking at the well regs that was nice that we have here. Um, for the, for the distances. Yep. Uh, Fifteen feet from property, ten feet from property. The center line of a well shall, if extended vertically, clear any projection from an adjacent structure by at least five feet. So that's it. Goes up. So you could have a pretty tight location to a building. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, uh, normal high water mark. They should, um, they should, when they, I uh, gotta look at this site plan again, I guess. Uh, so this is a new, new greenhouse, new house. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the provisions are in there and anybody who puts it in should know, but the, the new, the, the uh, pumped sewage line out to the street, which I'm going to guess is going to be here, needs to be sure to be below any supply line of water coming from the well into the house. Right. So, so when they, when that get, it's these lines aren't shown on here, but just guessing, they don't necessarily cross each other even at all here, and probably don't need to. So, right. but you never know. Depends where the sewage leaves the building and the water goes in. Okay. Yeah, that uh, parcel, the other parcel certainly fits the definition of carved out of the other <laughs> <laughs> It's quite, it's like. It's a beautiful old colonial that it's being carved out of. Hmm. So the barn went with the other house, the old house? The barn must have been part of the farm that was that parcel. Yeah. Existing right, barn. and it's now part of the new house parcel. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well. All right. And that's a constructed pool, huge, big pool there, or it looks big from here. I don't know. Pool, anyway. <laughs> on the on not the new thing, but the the carved out parcel has a pool in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. <clears throat> so. Um... It says some trenches, like nine feet, 140 feet, 170. Are those sewer, uh, sewer connections or? Where, where are, are you they? seeing that? Uh, I'm seeing it, the proposed well map. Uh, proposed well map, okay. Um, yeah. Just and next to the driveway, you have a trenches with uh, different, I don't know what, what they mean by. Wait a minute, not the, the well? Not the one with the big circle? No, uh, yeah. and next to it, you, you see uh, trench 90, 140, uh, I don't know what that, is I think, it, uh, are related oh, to this? Oh, oh. Sewer so electric yeah. cable internet? 
Trench exactly. 170. Um, Electric and yeah. the three parts of that sort of Z shaped uh, double line. Oh, okay. That is, um, yeah, it's, util it's a utility trench for sewer, electric, and cable. I didn't even see that before. So that's a utility trench for sewer, electric, and cable. So the one goes out to the town sewer line. Yeah. And uh -huh. so that, that's just a trench for, um, for all those lines. It's a, a more than a, it's going to be more than a trench. Hopefully it has pipes or a box in it or something. <laughs> but it's, it's where all the, the, the uh, a, a pressure sewer line would come out, an electric conduit, and whatever it carries the cable and internet. Yeah. Oh, you know, and now that you say that, I'm remembering what the great expense was with connecting with the water line. Yeah. You see how the water line is on the east side of East Pleasant Street? Oh, the uh -huh. road cut? Uh, yeah. The, uh, they were going to have to put a considerable amount of money into repairing East Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the road cut to get there. Yeah, because it's, I think the paving was done within the last couple of years or something. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, that it was. Okay. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, that is a, the water main coming up, coming in around. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't seen it. Utility pole to electric. electric power sewer. So that's a moot made my question about the water and moot point. So the sewer goes around the, the well. So, mm -hmm. it is an interesting point, but yeah, it's far away. That's all right. Okay, uh, I don't have I don't okay. have any more questions. Anyone else have any more questions? Oh. No. Would someone like well, to make a motion? Sure, I I'll move we accept the the uh, per well permit application for the proposed well for eight forty six East Pleasant Street. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> any opposing? Any abstention? Okay, so it was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Oh, too. you're welcome. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Ed. Thanks, Ed. Oh, no, happy okay. to do it. <laughs> Is, okay. I'll exit unless there's some reason that you need me to stay on. No? No. I think Julie, really? do you want to add on Thank from you, anything? Ed. No. Okay. No, that was great. Three pieces okay. of important business. That's okay. awesome. No, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right. You know how to Bye. It. Stay safe. Stay <laughs> healthy. All right. Take care. Okay. <laughs> What's next? Okay. COVID nineteen. Yes. Julie. Okay. So my I don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know where to start since I'm <laughs> in it every day, all day. So, yeah. Um. I, yeah, so let's see. So you know that we have um, a health department webpage and then the town yeah. created a um, COVID-19 page and hopefully they've been properly linked now. The idea was, you know, we had started with the health department page and then we were looking at what um, Princeton and New Jersey did. They had this great page where a lot of things could be located together. So we kind of mimicked that. Mm -hmm. I went on and looked at, I want to say it was excellent information. It's updated. And um, I, th I think that's really good. Yeah. So thank you. Are yeah. you and Jen doing it? Jen does it all. Okay. Well, it's tell great. her she's really doing a great job. Oh, that's great. I will. Especially, and, and she puts the date and time when she updates it. She updates it in the morning and she gives, uh, and she even lists the cases here um in in town and i've been tracking the cases state and county wise so mm -hmm. it's it's very helpful to see that so tell her it's good i will 
So the infrastructure that we created about a month ago is we have a, a core COVID-19 team. So that's myself, the town manager, assistant town manager, Dave Zomack, the fire chief, Scott Livingstone, no, wait, did I get that right now? No. Police, 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 fire chief and emergency management director, Tim Nelson, um, Guilford Mooring, superintendent of public works, Sonia Aldrich, who is our interim uh, finance director. Um, I think that's our whole team there. So we meet daily. Um, for a while, it was for two to three hours. Um, we've, we've kind of scaled back to about an hour a day. Um, and we do that seven days a week. And we are, um, we have an incident command structure where we're looking at all the information coming in from CDC, DPH, um, the governor, also seeing what's happening in town. Um, mm -hmm. Brianna Sunrid and Dave Somek is also our public information officer as well as assistant town manager and Brianna Sunrid um, handles communications with him. So she, along with a few other folks from town, created that new website. Um, is she the one who we saw when you had the, the meeting? What was it? Last? I've gone on to several of your Zoom meetings with Mike Morris. Uh, you know, the, the superintendent. Yes. And yes. Correct. Yes. Yep. So Brianna's our communications director. She's um, been with the town for a few years. And then, of course, Sean Hannon, who's who's um, hosting the meeting for us tonight, is uh, he's our IT director. And everyone in IT has also been working, as many mm -hmm. people have, but seven days a week to 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 um, transition us all to these remote platforms and mm -hmm. to get us all up to speed on on Zoom and Teams, which is the Microsoft version of Zoom and all the equipment that we've needed to do that. And the, everyone's really been working hard at that. Um, so Jennifer Brown, our public health nurse, is um, doing the contact tracing um, in fact, all the surveillance that has to happen around mm -hmm. an initial case. Um, she's managing the website um, and a myriad of other things. Um, so at our, at our meetings, we review um, what actions we need to take in town, um, what things are, are popping up in the community as potential issues. Um, things have gone... Um, smoothly. I think that uh, there haven't been any big problems. If there were, I would have let you know about them. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things the town manager keeps working on is these different ways to communicate out with the public. So the idea is that every Thursday at two, we'll have this um, it's, it's a, well, he calls it a radio show. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how it exists, but it's out there. It's advertised on Facebook. It then gets put onto ACTV. So on Thursdays, I'm on there with him for us to answer questions from the public and to uh, present any new information. And then on Tuesdays, um, he'll be bringing in different folks. So you saw last week we had the mm -hmm. school superintendent, myself and the town manager, um, next week, it will be, uh, I believe it's the police and fire chiefs on Tuesday, um, so that people can call in, dial in if they have a question there or a concern. Um, we're trying to do communication that way. Um, we're working really close. What? Oh, sorry, what time on Tuesdays? Um, it's two o'clock on Thursday, so, and I believe it's noon on Tuesday. Noon, okay. Yeah, okay. That's it will be posted thought. on the website. Julie, the, the website says, is these the town of Amherst community chats? Yes. Every Tuesday okay. and Thursday at noon, it says. Oh, they're both at noon. That's what it says. Yeah. The All right. Says. <laughs> yeah, I have probably got that wrong then. Um, thank okay. you for correcting me there. Um, but yeah, going to the website is the best the best way to see how to how to dial into those things and the times and the topics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Julie, yes. can I ask a question? Or, or I don't know if sure. you, you want to go on for a while. and then No, I questions. don't. <laughs> go for <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm curious of um, I'm curious of the discussion that might have taken place in deciding to put counts related to our town on the website, which is not required by anything state. That's an individual town by town decision, and I'm curious what you went through yeah. for the discussion about that. Yeah, thank you. That thank you for that question. Um, so initially, the Department of Public Health had um, issued guidance that just guidance that they didn't want towns to put their case counts up on, on for individual towns to just do it by county. So we were doing that up until um, I believe it was Monday of this week, perhaps. Um, we got many requests from residents to share that information. And so we talked about that quite a bit. And it felt like the community um, was concerned that if we weren't sharing that that data, that we weren't being transparent, that we were perhaps holding back information. Mm -hmm. And while I didn't feel that way, I could understand that that people were concerned about that and were trying to be as forthcoming with everything as we can be. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did make that decision to to post the number of actual tested cases. I had a few concerns of, with that, but one of them was that um, because the number isn't very high, <clears throat> it really doesn't represent the disease burden in the community or in the surrounding community. Because as we've seen the different issues around getting tests actually done, um, not, not as many people are getting tested as are sick in any way. So it really mm -hmm. only represents those who got tested and then the test came back positive. So it's not, I worry that it gives a slightly false impression that yeah. you know, there's not much to be here. I was did, did you express that caveat on the website. <laughs> that's really true. That it's a, probably a fraction, maybe a tenth, maybe who knows what that fraction is. Right. Did right. you also you just discuss um, posting how many tests have been conducted of residents of Amherst because that that I think I think is important to share and and you know right. DPH is doing that you know 80,000 70,000 and how many are positive and I think yeah. it's good to know the number of tests yeah we don't seem to be able to get that piece of the data um, I can look into that more but at the time we weren't so it's not being down down split it's up aggregated so they know how many quested and how many this lab and how many that lab yeah but, yeah and you can but, imagine with 351 towns in massachusetts that would take unless there was some easy you know way to just pull that down from the data i guess it, i guess it's just too hard to do um though, though i don't know 100 percent if that is true so i can look into that um because of course, that's helpful to know too. Yeah, I mean, it's just building a huge database, right? Where, where each row is a human, and uh, and it's a question of what you want to include or know about that human. And I think people want to know how many have that person been tested. Not the specific human, but g humans in general. You know, have yeah. you been tested? And then how many tests have been done? And then like uh, yesterday, I look at I look at four things every day myself. I tend to look at the work <laughs> U.S the state, and I haven't looked at the town actually, um, but, um, and the, for example, race and ethnicity just started to pop on the, the, pop, the state daily report. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's a column in that human's row mm -hmm. in the spreadsheet. And mm -hmm. the town where they live could e should be a column. The age is, a, right, they're reporting age, sex. Right. There's a row. There's a row in some data file for every human <laughs> that's gotten tested. So I, yeah. I don't think it's as hard as any. It, it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. It's just a. It's just a data query in a huge database. But yes, that can be done. Correct. We can teach millions of people by Zoom every second in the country. I think we can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question related to the testing and not testing. Are sure. you getting reports of people with presumed 
uh, COVID-19 based on clinical symptoms from their primary care provider or others? And are you having to do isolation and quarantine with those presumed cases? That's another good question. So the answer is no. Um, healthcare providers and facilities are so busy um, and so overwhelmed that they make the presumptive diagnosis um, or a, cl a clinical diagnosis if, if they don't have access to testing or they don't feel the person has meets the criteria at that current time to get a test, then they're doing a, a clinical diagnosis and they are advising people to isolate and then instructing their own patients on who around them should be quarantined. So of course it's not as robust a system as when they come through a public health department and you're doing all of that tracing. Um, but yeah, we literally get no reports of clinical diagnosis unless someone calls us a patient, a, a case themselves and people do that. And then, you know, we informally without documenting it are walking them through the important pieces of isolation and quarantine. Okay, thank you. I have two questions sort of related to that. Uh, Julie, <clears throat> first of all, do you plan, you and Jen, do you plan to continue to do contact trace no matter how many people um, might be getting sick? And do you have the resources to do that? It's a good question. Um, so I, have, I do no contact tracing. I am so involved with policy and our emergency planning meetings and outreach that Jen is doing the contact tracing. And we, the school nurses who are um, not working, um, I believe almost all of them have come forward to say they'll help with contact tracing. Um, so we've got two people onboarded who have been trained in MAVEN, our electronic um, surveillance system, uh, surveillance, um, <laughs> our, our electronic system, system for disease um, control. And um, so that's been working really well. We also, you've probably heard about that the state is opening up a thousand person contact investigation um, command center. That they're doing that in partnership with um, Partners in Health. And so um, we are in the pipeline for that. So when we do need that, we will be able to deploy some of our. Um, our cases and um, contacts back to them to do the investigation if things ramp up to um, huge numbers. Yeah. So the state has done a really good job in creating that as they begin to realize that we weren't gonna be able to, towns, we're not gonna be able to handle like tens of thousands of contacts. Yeah. yeah. Especially in Massachusetts. So again, when we're looking at CDC creating policy um, and almost every other state in the country has large county systems. And in Massachusetts, we have our little 351 pound system. You can imagine all the towns that don't have any staff. Yeah. So. Yeah. One other question, uh, there's a special population, uh, like on Amherst College campus, there's 200 students. They're all packed into three dorms. They moved the students that had to stay. So they're in absolutely the worst, almost prison type conditions there. It, have any of them come down or would you be allowed to tell us this if you know and do you know anything about that population and are there similar populations at UMass I don't know if the UMass dorm is completely empty or we have well, about 500, very good quest, 500 students on campus I think yeah okay okay yes about 500 students on UMass campus um, they have also consolidated down I think to one dorm or one building yeah um, I've worked very closely with Amherst College from the very beginning. Um, and I actually think they've done a phenomenal job every step of the way. We're still in close contact. Um, I wouldn't be able to say yeah. if we had a case in any particular environment. Okay. Um, but I think that the choices they've made actually around where to cluster the students um, have been done in a really um, uh, what do I want to say, methodical, safe manner. So while I haven't been in those particular dorms, um, we talked at length and continue to talk about all the um, implications around infection control. I've met with um, the head of their emergency team, with the president of the college. Um, I've really been impressed with how proactive they've been and um, 
how how deep their um, attention has been to caring for their students and faculty. So it's really been something. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. More questions, please. Oh, has there been thought given to um, <laughs> places for isolation or quarantine out, outside of the home? Um, I know for the, the unhoused population, there is a plan to use Hampshire College, but I just wondered if there were other sites for other populations. Well, that is a good question. What we started with is um, our um, individuals experiencing homelessness and how we could care for them if they become positive, um, if they need quarantine, um, but before that also how we keep them healthy. Um, and that has been, um, that has gone very well. We've had screeners in at the shelters, at the shelter for over three weeks, medical screeners um, who volunteer their time and um, check every guest every night, take their temperature, um, and really have helped the shelter staff in keeping that environment um, really socially distanced and disinfected. Um, so that's the population that we've started with. We are thinking about other populations of folks who may not have the capability to, especially to isolate at home if they're sick because they might not have someone to care for them. Um, and we don't have a specific answer for that yet, but it's part of our planning and our thinking. At the same time, the uh, state is thinking along these lines. So the state has been, has done an assessment all around um, the Commonwealth of uh, colleges and hotels. And so they are identifying places where if someone was positive and did not quite meet the criteria for being hospitalized, but needed a place to go, that they would be able to identify some of those sites. For example, for um, families um, where, you may know that, I think it was as recently as two years ago, we had over 2,000 families living in hotels around Massachusetts, mm -hmm. homeless families. Um, that was completely, um, turned around and those folks now live in family shelters, which is not a good place to, um, to be sick. So for example, families like that, if someone was, was sick, um, they would be brought to probably some hotel site where people could have individual rooms. I don't know how it works, interlocking suites or something for families. So the state is also looking at this because, um, this is a hard thing to grapple with town by town. Um, and because we don't have a county system, um, the state has really stepped in to help with coming up with solutions for these issues. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what's happening for well homeless? Um, I used to go through walks through town to see what was happening. And I did some talking at great distances, and they told me how they were monitoring things at Craig's place. But during the day, where are homeless people able to go and go to the bathroom? And mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. they haven't been outside of CVS in the past few days, so. Yeah. I don't know where so they are. I think one thing we're really grateful for is that it's warmer weather now. Um, yes so that it's not brutal to be outside. Um, a few weeks ago, we've got two porta potties with a sink that were put um, on the Prey Street lot so that there would mm -hmm. be open and accessible public bathrooms during the day for folks because once all the buildings were closed down, um, mm -hmm. you know, bathrooms right. were a problem. Right. Um, we have just today or yesterday moved another porta potty with a, a sink, either one or two porta potties with a sink over um, behind where Craig's doors is. There's a trailer in the back of the parking lot. So mm -hmm. there's also mm -hmm. um, bathroom facilities right there. 
Um, some people's mm -hmm. uh, belongings are stored in the trailer at First Baptist. Um, and sometimes people are staying around um, during the day in that area because there aren't that many places to go. So now yeah. there, there are um, bathrooms and hand washing facilities there. Mm -hmm. um, and rainy days, I saw a few huddled under umbrellas in, in little little places in town one day and so I, i'm concerned like today wasn't very good for part of the day yeah yeah um and they're huddled very close under umbrellas then yeah <laughs> certainly not social distancing yeah we um we spent quite some time um before the buildings closed to see if we could come up with um, some type of uh, place for folks to go during the day and we weren't successful for that with that um, one of the things that happens whenever you try to create environments is that everywhere people are needing staff for things whether it's medical yeah. staff or shelter staff or you know mm -hmm. safety staff and so um, and then so many people because they fit criteria where they really need to stay home in in so many of our other yeah. settings people aren't able to volunteer so we don't yeah. have the same number of volunteers who can do meals on wheels or the survival center so that volunteer pool let alone the worker pool has been so decreased and so mm -hmm. we weren't able to come up with a solution for that okay questions All right. let's see where were we? Oh, questions? <laughs> You're talking about the volunteer pool being uh, quite yeah. depleted. Uh, and quite depleted, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, so as, as we look forward, I mean, I think food security is one of the other big things that we're worried about because um, as we see the impact of people not having employment, um, the impact of food stores that were available at the food bank at the survival center being used, um, there's going to be more and more need for, for food and then for people to be getting it out to people as we have people who are sicker and unable to get their food or um, unable to leave their homes because they're in quarantine. So uh -huh. um, that's one of the other um, big issues. Mm -hmm. Our senior center director, Mary Beth Ogilevitz, has been doing a really great job with um, the senior population. And, and I think that Maureen actually is a, has been a volunteer meal deliverer. I haven't during yeah. this time, no. Um, before this time. I, before okay. I was, but because yeah. of my age. And, and, yeah. and the whole system changed because it's no longer coming out of UMass. Right. Uh, it's coming from Highland Valley. So I haven't continued. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I was surprised I to think that maybe you were. So I'm glad to hear that you're safe because okay. it's really tough. I mean, when you think about the fact that we have an aging population, um, it really is affecting us all across the board now, you know, whether it's folks experiencing homelessness or um, people, um, in jobs or you know many of those people were people who were volunteering and now I had to draw back from that yeah so I have a question do you have a sense of what the population in Amherst is now with the students gone like about what are our numbers um. well so um, as John was saying there's about 500 students on campus Right. And there was the thought that there were maybe like 7,000 living off campus. Now, that doesn't mean that they're all in Amherst. Right. Um, I see them. I, a good thing with the students, I never see them in more than groups of maybe four walking together, which means it might be all kinds of roommates. Um, I've seen a little bit of soccer at the Amherst fields, but it's under 10. I've seen a little bit of maybe a couple of people of soccer on the UMass fields, but it's only like two or three. Um, so I, I really, th I think the students are trying. I have not. 
The university has worked really hard to get messaging out to them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think we, we had a sense that not as many students came back um, as we're currently living off campus. And then there's been sort of this sense that some of them, even if they came back, they've left now. So we don't seem to have a count. Um, there, are, there are a lot of cars at the, on the big white house on the corner of Amity and Lincoln. Uh -huh. And when Mark and I went for a walk the other night, there were a lot of cars there. We could hear a lot of noise. I don't know if there was a party going on. Um, I don't so know. the other thing we're trying to do is, um, you know, if people have been concerned, sometimes we get calls about there are big groups of students congregating. So the concept is if that happens, um, the police will take a spin by and try to explain to them um, how important it is for them to social distance, you know, just trying to get that message out. Um, it's hard, you know, for many reasons that we all know. I mean, one is original. Initially, it was like, oh, don't worry, you know, that population is going to be safe. Mm -hmm. So having that kind of messaging turning around is difficult. And then um, it's an age group where, you know, they're young and healthy and they feel fine and it's hard. This mm -hmm. is a very invisible thing for all of us, right? Um, unless it's actually touched someone you know. So um, it, it's tough. And I think the, um, the university is working really hard to try and reach out to students to help keep them safe. I have um, two issues. I think downtown looks pretty good. I used to do regular walkthroughs and it's quieter and quieter. Um, I do, have, I think Big Y needs some education. I don't know if Governor um, Baker's new edicts have come out. I think the store people are trying hard, but people, uh, we left. Um, um, I, one time there was this guy with a car parked of food at the end of an aisle yapping on the phone for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. He didn't come in and go out. Um, yeah, so that's a good I think they might be pacing it better. Uh, uh, Trader Joe's is doing a good job. Even Aldi's so, uh, is um, doing a good job. Yeah, so the governor's order came out um, about um, yesterday only having before. only having 40 percent of occupancy load etc cetera, etc cetera. so um our um health inspectors are going to be calling all of okay. um, those facilities and going mm -hmm. over it with them we're creating some documents to send out also um, of course we don't have any um oversight in hadley um right and that's at the store <laughs> Trader Joe's, Target, Walmart, all of which are places that have food, um, because they're national chains, um, they're actually coming out with some of their own really good policies. Right. Um, so uh, I think that, um, that that's a good thing. And then another concern, and I don't know if Jen should put it up on the website or if we should post it places is when people use masks and gloves are they doing it properly and taking you know so you wear a mask you wear a mask and then you you drop it off you wear gloves and then i see gloves in parking lots and um when i was out today um mm -hmm. we go once a week to go grocery shopping mm -hmm. and um we we grocery shop for our 95 year old neighbor and um, so those are, I don't know if Jen can find something simple about, you know, using our, own, our old nursing OR and isolation techniques of a little bit of how to properly use um, yeah, a I mean, and gloves. I, I think the problem is while people do go to our website, um, you know, I don't think having information there is really going to impact yeah. people. It's it's all over the internet. It's um, right. You know, I don't know if we want to make maybe the Gazette. Signs that get posted. The Gazette, yeah. Excuse me. I wonder if getting signs that posted or something, but not enough people get the Gazette or the Bolts. And I don't. I don't know. It's just a thought. Yeah. Um, I would. If Jen needs help doing something like that, or if you need decide with a little handout that gets posted on buildings, I'd gladly bring that around. 
Okay. Um, okay, that's a great idea. It's, we'll you know, it's not big it. high on the list, but when more and more people are wearing gloves and wearing masks, um, just yeah. So, so that false sense, first of all, the litter, the false sense of protection. Mm -hmm. So if people are, yes. um, you know, using those things and then not changing them and not washing the mask, right. and standing too close. Yeah, so I see people driving with their gloves on and their mask on and then, you know, where have they been? <laughs> it's all over the steering yeah. wheel and then you answer yeah. your cell phone. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, so. lot of complications here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if Jen needs any help or if anyone has any ideas, I'd be glad to help. And anything like that, that with education, if Jen wants help or you want help, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You know, You're it's doing like, an amazing job, Julie. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You know, it, it's just like everything else, right, in public health or in nursing where we have a message and we want people to take certain actions, but what do you do, how do you say it, you know, in such a way that it actually causes someone to modify their behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, also, it's lack of knowledge and the false sense of security with gloves and masks. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So more questions? Yeah, Julie, I don't know if, if you've started this conversation yet, but I think the whole country, whether you're at a university or a town or a school system, the conversation about um, planning for and thinking about implementing a return to interaction and work and things like that on what way or what ways, what are people throwing out there as ways to do this? And on top of that, I guess the question that goes along with it, because I think it's important is, are you getting information about the status of being able to, to rapidly test for antibodies in, any, in anybody? Because I think we have to know exposure to allow interaction. So just those two questions strike me. I mean, they're obviously, at the heart of um, what Tim and I do with, a, you know, will anybody be coming back to UMass Amherst in the fall or not? That's a big question <laughs> that nobody can answer just yet. Um, but, you know. Um, yeah. But um, I'm curious at what sort of discussions are, if anything's come up in the, within the town as a workplace or the town as a, mm -hmm. how do we, we, we've been focusing on, on, uh, distancing and, and decreasing the rate of transmission of this uh, in fact anybody's for so we either gotta we either gotta get it or get a vaccine and the vaccine's far out so I don't know just curious how yeah I guess we're all curious <laughs> um, <laughs> you know I what what we do at the town and what I you know really focus on is um, looking at the science, looking at what CDC is saying, looking at what, at what the Department of Public Health is saying. And in terms of a return to work, I think um, we can't really predict that yet. Um, it's really going to be based on when we see um, the predicted surge in Massachusetts and when and how well we're able to contain that and how quickly it it drops off so um yeah, yeah i'm not really asking about the when question the data is okay. going to drive the when it, it's yeah. how it's how, how we make decision making because so you're not going to yeah. do it on the basis of there is no coronavirus a person who's infectious right. existing okay right. everybody's okay right. well, that's not going to happen so right. what's in between that and knowing everybody having a, a card or a label say, I've got the antibodies or I don't have the antibodies. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that. And when, and your question about antibodies is fascinating because um, while we know currently that if people have antibodies, they have protection for a certain period of time, we don't know how long. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, but we, I, think, I mean, there's no reason to think it's going to behave drastically differently than a lot of other envelope viruses or other viruses, right? There's, we, 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 that's all we can go on because we haven't done the testing of this virus. 
very much for right. reading fiction, right? Uh, right. I think there is some study. There's an ER doc at Bay State on my street. We were talking about this the other day. And um, I guess there's been some monkeys, monkey studies for reinfection, for, for resistance. You know, mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing you have to do. You have to have infected mammals and see if they retain it. So, right. Anyway. So, yes, I don't know anything about what the parameters will be for return to work. I haven't heard anything about that. I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And in terms of um, antibody testing, um, we did talk about that at the Department of Public Health on <coughs> Tuesday, and um, we're not there yet for that being something that's being done widespread. Yeah, um, it's being worked on, you know, all over the world. So yeah, um, yeah only time will tell. Yeah, yeah it's always the, the notion of people throwing out dates. This is an effect on till is just a, it's just yeah it's just you might as well just take a pick a random number because uh, yeah, the data, is, the data is going to tell you we yeah. take numbers so that people can sort of hang their hats on them yeah because yeah. it's you know just psychologically the concept of yeah. well we're just waiting is it's just unbearable for it people, is yeah right? it's difficult so yeah. you know we look at when the shelter closes or we look at when school would normally be out and you know we're yep. sort of Jen likes to use the term chunking like we're just chunking <laughs> time to see yep. oh, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah yeah I, a bunch of our students at UMass the undergrads really got hurt the, I think UMass is doing a great job but um, I happen to go there two days a week because I'm teaching out of a room that has a lot of technology there's only a handful of people doing it but I've able to get access. I don't see anybody. <laughs> you know, okay. but yeah, yeah, no, it's, there's nobody around. Um, but uh, the before spring break, the sequence of the, the two announcements <coughs> was bad for students because a lot of them got caught leaving UMass with their belongings in their dorm room and they can't get back. And that's, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the, the chance, the announcement on Wednesday of that week from the chancellor just, most of us shook our head. It was like, what do you mean they're gonna come back in two weeks? And then to change the mind about 10 of five on Friday is kind of brutal. So that was the one mistake I would fault of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. There certainly have been moments when all of us have been like, ooh, should have done that earlier. Or, right, right. You right. know, it's, it's so hard. It's really pretty fascinating, you know, especially now as time goes by and you're looking at making another decision. And now what we yeah. have to say is, well, you know, Andrew Cuomo <coughs> thinking about it, doing it now, you probably should have done two weeks ago, go do it now. <laughs> so that's kind of what we're, we're using. I mean, I just, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's the decision making is very hard as we want people to be able to be educated and we want people to work and um, yeah, it's often really complex decisions. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there was Something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, I guess should I would. Hmm? Should we tune in tomorrow morning? Isn't it at eight o'clock? You're going to have a session with uh, Paul? <laughs> yes, I'm doing a cup of joe with Paul. Um, <laughs> virtually, we will have uh, people can call in and ask questions. So yes, if you have more questions tomorrow, um, then you have access to Paul too. That's right. Um, should we have like a short check-in meeting in two weeks? on zoom do you think that would be beneficial i don't know i mean i know i haven't kept in good touch with you all um mm -hmm. okay. because it's just so busy um yeah but uh i don't know I, I think maybe if you just reach out and i'm happy to you know give me a nudge and then i can send you all emails because um I don't know, unless, unless, the, unless you all feel differently. Well, Julie, the other thing you could do is just let us know, like if there's one of those Tuesday or Thursday sessions that you think might be informative to us, you just might remind us by email to check yes. in. Yes, okay, yeah. Because yeah, I did the one with you and Paul and Morris, um, and that was helpful. I agree, I did that too. It was, I kind of, I read about it in the Gazette. That's how I found right. out. Right, that's yeah. how I read yeah. about it. But maybe yeah. you keep us posted because I do go posted. into all these websites and then after a while I think I, I can't do this anymore. I've been doing 
COVID-19 from the APHA and whatever the new Institute of Medicine is. And I, there had been a weekly Department of Public Health or Boards of Health that I've gone into. And mm -hmm. um, I, I just, after a while, I just said, uh, okay, I'm just sitting here and I'm, I'm just being an old lady keeping myself healthy. <laughs> 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 uh, no, but I, if know, there's, there's anything we can do, yeah. No, I I have you all in the back of my mind, and it, it's just it's um, you know, it's kind of this bottleneck of us mm -hmm. of us trying to. Well, if it's any way we can take some pressure off of you. To help yeah, you. no, I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, you know, really, so much of it is just um, just all the all the work we're doing to think mm -hmm. about protecting the homeless that's been and really the whole country has been very focused on that all states you know it's just such a um such a, a big issue uh, mm -hmm. because it's the definition of crowded living quarters no resources mm -hmm. you know when we look at those things that affect people's health yeah. so um, now, northampton has set up something at the uh, at the high school a 75 mm -hmm. beds if you um uh, yes if we, you communicate we, with uh, uh with meredith at all yes meredith the health director in north Hampton, right. we communicate all the time and the mm -hmm. two towns did work together for a bit on the possibility of um collaborating with that mm -hmm. um that did not come to fruition um so th what happens is every every community is struggling with what to do with their folks who aren't healthy. So mm -hmm. she's got a large shelter for healthy folks. They're, one of their shelters, and probably both of them, were very small. So the ability mm -hmm. to do any social distancing was, mm -hmm. was really not there. We, are, we have been lucky at Craig's stores that um, there is six foot distancing between cots, for example, which um, yeah, that's what the, the guy who I talked to in town told me. The yeah, guy. yeah. Still and, you know, other shelters are often, mm -hmm. other shelters are often bunk beds and lots of people mm -hmm. in one room very close together. So mm -hmm. um, really, they and we and other communities also are up against how to handle isolation and quarantine. So mm -hmm. we are trying to work together on that, um, on various aspects of that. Um, and I, I don't know if I said this, but the state has come up with, well, I was explaining the hotel solutions. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so anyway. Now, as a, I know it's in Hadley, but the tent city behind Big Y, I didn't drive back there. Are people back there? Has anyone driven back there? There's a small encampment back there. Um, mm -hmm. The last, for quite some time, there haven't been people there. I don't know if there are now, now okay. that the weather is better. Yeah. Um, we have outreach but workers. Hadley. <laughs> but that's Hadley. <laughs> well, but yeah. we have outreach workers um, from Elliott Homeless Services who mm -hmm. do work in Northampton, Hadley, Amherst. So they go out to um, different tent sites to work with folks. So they're um, aware of various places that people are living that aren't shelters. Okay. And they engage with those folks um, and okay. are trying to help them to stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And we've also worked with healthcare for the homeless and um, mm -hmm. yeah. Julie, what's the um, sense of, is there any particular community or location in Eastern Massachusetts where um, currently uh, ICU ventilator and ventilator capacity has been challenged? I mean, are, are up against the wall or are we still, is, is the major facility still okay for COVID patients? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I can say. I think they're getting pretty, pretty filled up. Um, I don't think I could say specifically okay. if they're at their tipping point. My neighbor uh, said base date, this was three days ago, was okay from a beds and ventilator perspective, but it was really respiratory therapists and ICU nurses that they were short. Mm -hmm. A lot of people trying to get retooled to uh, <laughs> learn new skills. 
Yes, yes, they are definitely pulling people from other types of specialties and, and putting them in those spots, yeah, and getting them up to speed. I've heard that right. locally. About two weeks ago, I sat in on a, a Cooley Dickinson um, presentation, and I was impressed that they were able to go from basically seven ventilators to 35. Mm -hmm. wow. Whether mm -hmm. they have the staffing to man those all, I don't know. Yeah. But um, And I, I think I read some recent numbers, and of course, the Gazette, where they were, I've forgotten how many people were patients, maybe 25, but only a small fraction on ventilators. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that was a ramping up that I didn't expect to see, honestly, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've kept in close contact with Cooley Dick too. And yeah, they've really been able to kind of refigure some of their, reconfigure some of their units. So they've got a lot more bed space and um, they increased the ventilators. Mm -hmm. they, they created um, a special respiratory clinic Mm -hmm. for folks to go to so they're not all going through the ER. Um, so yeah, they've been able to do a lot of really good things. Mm -hmm. I have a, a, a young friend who's an ICU nurse in um, Melrose and Wakefield and they're having trouble with uh, PPE, but one of their doctors is Chinese and he had friends send them suits from China, so they're using them, but they don't have enough PPE. And some of the older hospitals don't even have partitions, just just curtains between ICU beds. Yeah. And the nurses are getting very, very nervous and very tired, and they all have face rashes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they put in these 12-hour shifts, and um, yeah, Caitlin has a big rash on her face. Mm. Um, yeah. And some people are thinking of getting RVs. Matter of fact, her husband said maybe we should get an RV that you stay in because she feels compelled to work and she has two small kids. Mm -hmm. So people are, are looking into getting RVs so that their family member can stay in it and stay at home but not be near their family members. Yeah. I have two doctor daughters and one daughter in law. And they are also looking at extra spaces if, if one of them should get sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's an empty apartment across the hall. There's an empty apartment upstairs or whatever. They're kind mm -hmm. of talking to their respective landlords. Mm -hmm. And you have a wedding. Is that being posted? How are well, you that doing is with your totally wedding? off. That's, that was supposed <laughs> to be April 25th. That is not. Right. And you can't even get a marriage license, never mind uh, get together. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. So, that'll be another time. That's okay. That's mm -hmm. no big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, it, you know, you hear different, different reports from different people from all walks of life and how this is affecting them. And, uh, you know. But, yeah, but Julie, given Maven and given what I get from the DPH and Governor Baker and you, I, I, I don't want to have a false sense of hope, but I, I feel that um, we're doing a better job than lots of other areas in the country. And so I, I want to give a lot of kudos to you and whoever you talk to that um, I, I I'm anxious and I'm worried, but I have a sense of, okay, we're doing the best we can and, and people are really working hard, such as you. So I, I, I just want to make sure that you is that. doing a good job. I do feel that way. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, I mean, we had great infrastructure because we already had Maven. Maven is such right. an incredible tool. It's mm -hmm. recognized nationally as being one of the best um, virtual epidemiological tools. People often want to mimic it. And um, so, and I think we, it's interesting. I think we're a very collaborative state. People really work together. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that we have a lot going for us here. Yeah. The CDC hasn't even been able to come up with anything for tracking like Navy yet. <laughs> and a lot of money and a lot of expertise and they're still from what I read in here they're still grappling with it mm. I thought well come on up and talk to Maven here 
Yeah, I, I yeah. guess I feel there's a little disconnect between what I read about the numbers, you know, online, e even in this area. And, and it's reassuring there haven't been many deaths in, in Hampshire County and the case numbers aren't rising too terribly fast. But also hearing about, you know, people with families, younger people with younger kids where the whole family had it or, and, you know, a couple of those, totally anecdotal, but it's like right. it's out there, but we're not seeing it in the reports. Right. And we're not capturing it. And because really the two ways we have to capture it are the tests, which are, you know, woefully under, underperformed and then deaths. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, those you know, deaths is, is a horrible blunt instrument and um, the inability to test whether, whether we don't have enough of the swabs or the medium or the, um, the tests were getting clogged up around the country so the turnover rate was so slow or um, we don't have enough providers to even perform the test, whatever it is, it's, um, it's all very frustrating. Um, the, the, I heard about the, the test site in Lowell with CBS and the rapid tests. Is there mm -hmm. thoughts that that's something in Hampshire County like yes. that might be happening? Yes. There are thoughts that might be happening yeah. very soon. Yeah. Yeah. I just heard it was, they were going to set it up at, I think in West Springfield. I just read that or heard that from the Mass Department of Public Health. They do, they have, um, I don't know if it's the rapid test or not. Maybe oh, it is a rapid right. test for first responders, fire mm -hmm. police, fire and police. EPW. Um, and uh, yeah, that just got started. So that's happening. Yep. So there's this real push to make sure that all of those critical infrastructure folks are able to be at work and, and be well taken care of because they um, keep us all going. Mm -hmm. And a big thing in, in coming back is, is being able to have enough tests and contact information and tracking. And if we're not having enough tests. Mm. But we're so getting there with the test, you know, like UMass is making yeah. medium. Um, there's, I mean, we're really getting there. Mm -hmm. People are all pitching in to, to make that happen. Oh, good. Julia, do you, um, but do you hear from people that tell you they, they they weren't able to be tested yes all the yeah. time and that's because the tests are being prioritized so right. um it, it it's it's understandable to me that that they're not getting tested um they're still getting care you know their their pcps are, are diagnosing them and and they're told to check in with them and yeah but definitely that happens a lot one of our graduate students went home to San Diego, I think it's about the spring break time, came back and her advisor just informed me that, that she, she uh, had symptoms, was sick and, and knows a family member sick, but she was, uh, was deemed too young to be tested, and it was not a priority, yep. so right she never got, never got tested. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's something. What, and of course, my, it will change every every hour, every day. It changes. The, the whole picture changes. One of my colleagues, a faculty member, was had symptoms early that that made you wonder about things. But he um, he got tested by driving up to UH University Health Services, got a nasal swab, and got tested. He's negative, but um, mm -hmm. but did did manage to get tested. He's he's seventy and and had symptoms. So yeah, yeah. I thought that was. Good to hear that the process that process worked yes yes we good <laughs> i think so okay. I, I think that's all i have for you i have a question and it's about the tobacco regulations <laughs> yeah we to go like right after our last meeting which seems like god knows when um i started to, to look at them and make some you know, edits or cuts and paste. And I, I'm really bad at managing documents and I kind of lost some of the page numbers and some of the, you know, the, the, the whole book of the thing. Uh -oh. So I saved it as a separate, <laughs> uh, yeah, I saved it separately. So it didn't in interfere with Steve's uh, version. Yes. And at some point, is it appropriate for me to 
send that to you and just send it out to people or I, yeah, I you probably, can just send it out to everybody yeah, I was going to say it. whenever if you guys have something you want to send out as long as there's no conversation just send it to everyone okay, okay. and I have I have documents to be sent to and then when this whole COVID came they're just sitting on my computer but I'll send them all out tomorrow uh, I will I will look at I have to probably go back to the beginning and try to figure out what I was trying to do with that and it, it probably wouldn't be a bad thing for, for anyway so I, I'm yeah, yeah if anyone wants to work on that because you know you're at home and <laughs> you want to work on it awesome not me, well, I went <laughs> not me but I went from there to to sewing masks cloth masks mm -hmm. for oh that's great so that <laughs> was my yeah, remember yeah, that when you send something, when you send something to everybody, you probably should either use the BCC when you, to send, or else remind everybody don't reply all because we'll soon get into replying yes. all. Okay. Yeah, don't reply all. Yeah, no. as long as there's no conversation. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So is that it? I guess Make high horse isn't open, huh? Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask that. I think that's <laughs> close. I think that's a moot point now. What do you think, Julie? Well, Susan, you know, she did her due diligence. She reached out to them. She said, Julie, what do you want me to do? I said, you know, we, we can't do anything about that right now. They appear to be closed. Um, and she didn't hear back from them. So. And their license is not, is expires. May 31st. It will expire. I mean, I think that I just didn't feel like that was something that we could deal with during this. No. So, yeah. you know, if they come back later at some point and say, oh, we want to talk, we want to reopen, you know, whatever, we'll just deal with it then, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Julie. All right. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you Julie. Thank All right, Jane. Thank, thank you, everybody. Everybody stay you. safe and healthy. All right. Happy Passover, yeah. happy Easter, whatever. Yeah. Happy. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, bye, -bye. To adjourn. Bye.